Hi guys, this is video number two from uh, what I think I'm going to be calling Speedy Tricks. Um, so this one's a bit of an interesting one, uh, kicking off on the second one. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make curtains, like the curtains you see in a theatre are very thick, low-hanging curtains. Um, you can make really thin, uh, like chiffony material curtains from this, but I'm just going to show you how to make like, really nice, big, dense curtains. And we're not going to use any of the... Um, the polygon tools for this at first. We're going to we're going to start using the NURB controls for this. Now, obviously, within a game situation, and in most simulation in um, situations and VFX situations, we don't use NURBs that often. Um, we use them mainly to create stuff that can be created faster with these and with polygons. But for now, um, we're going to convert it later on. So, kicking straight in, I'm going to make. A CV curve and I'm going to go to the top view for this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tracing what the bottom of the curtain would look like if we were to do like a cross section of the bottom of the curtain so I'm going to just imagine some really nice sort of one more I guess yep so that's my curtain I'm just going to do a little bit of tweaking to even out these spaces because Especially for this, we want a nice even distribution of control points. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my curve. I'm actually going to rebuild the curve. Um, so I'm going to select the curve. I'm going to go up to surfaces. I'm going to go down to rebuild. I'm going to go to the option box on this one. Uh, and then I'm going to... Apologies, I'm not going to surfaces at all. I'm going to curves, then down to rebuild. So I'm going to go back in with curves, rebuild, not surfaces, obviously, because I'm not dealing with a surface. And this number of spans here, I'm going to say, right, I'm going to put that to, let's say, 12. See what happens with that. What happens is 12 control points now get distributed evenly across this surface with nice equal distances between each other. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go into uh, perspective mode. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to hit control D to duplicate one. I'm going to move it up. Very nice, very nice. Right, so I'm going to, with this selected now, I'm going to shift click the bottom one. So now I've got both of these selected. Then I'm going to go to surfaces and then loft. The very top one, create loft. And then I'm, because from my angle I want the faces to face the other way, in surfaces, reverse direction. There we go. So now you can see we've got a very basic sort of cross section there. You can see where the folds of the cloth are and stuff. Now remember, using curves, we can then manipulate our geometry after the fact. So when we can start to maybe pinch some of these sections together, start making the asymmetrical features of cloth because obviously at the very top of our, of our cloth there's going to be some form of hanging maybe a loophole and as the cloth kind of goes up it will kind of gather in some places and not in other places so Like that, uh, I'll move this one back, it's not working as well as I thought it would. There you go, so that's one very quick way of doing curtains. Now, using the exact same, if we go back, using the exact same function, oh, look, look. I'm just going to delete this normal, it's bigger. and I'm going to, this nerve, sorry, I'm going to do another duplicate, I'm going to move it down so it's in the middle. I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to select, but I'm going to select them in order this time. So I'm going to select the top one, the middle one, then the bottom one. In, as in the order the flow they go. Then I go to curve, uh, surfaces, loft. Then I'm just going to reverse that direction. Like that. Now in here, we can do the exact same thing, but we've just been given a bit more control. Because now we've added a center line of nerves with their own control points that we can then start to really sort of shape and twist to our will. So I'm actually going to flatten this top group out a little bit. And 
widen this bottom group out a little bit. You can see there we've already kind of got much more, so it's going to be flatter at the top, wider at the bottom, maybe I'll even see what happens there. And then we can start playing with our control points again. Start seeing if we can make some really nice folds in the cloth. Uh, one thing I would recommend when we're doing this is actually having some uh, reference of cloth handy. I'm just going to move that back. It's not looking so good. Uh, he's having some uh, reference of cloth handy so you can actually say, okay, that's what that needs to do, that's what that needs to do. Because cloth, there's different types of cloth and they all kind of move very independently. The stuff that's used for theatres, it's very, 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 very dense cloth, um, incredibly heavy. But then if you've got stuff, if you do anything for architectural visualization, then you're probably going to be working with uh, something along the lines of uh, chiffony, kind of maybe silky material, uh, for some really light blinds. If you're working with anything that's meant to be like a, a medieval, then you're working with really dense cotton, then you're working with a not... It's going to be very, very dense, along the same lines as the um, theatre curtains. So I'm going to say, I mean, it's not great because I'm only doing this very quickly, but if I spent a little, about, you know, if I had the scene set out and I was spent a, a bit longer on this, I'd probably be able to make something a lot nicer. But one great thing about NURBS is they actually give us our, I mean, you can't see them so well at the minute, but we've, they've actually laid out our UVs for us. It's one of the great things about this. Uh, but we can use this inside a game engine. This asset here is a NURB, uh, or a non-uniform rational beast spline, which we cannot use inside a game engine. So we want to convert this into a into a polygon, a basic geometric form. So with it selected, I'm going to go to Modify, Convert, NURB to Polygons, and then I'm going to click Quads, because remember we want to, this is going into the option box, Modify, let's do that again, went a bit fast then. Modify, convert, which is underneath objects, convert, nerbs to polygon, which is what we want for this. And then I click the little option box next to it to get the features. So by default, it wants to be turned to a triangle. We don't want that because if we want to manipulate this after the fact, triangles is just going to make it a little bit more difficult for us. Um, so I'm going to click at the quad. And generally, I want to go for count because I want to, I want to dictate how many polygons there are inside this shape. Uh, by default it's set to 200, let's just go and test late, see what happens. And I think that's worked alright. So yeah, that gives us a pretty good count. In fact, I'll probably, I'll go, I'll go up to 300, see what that gives us. Because that was a little bit spiky, a little bit too low res. Much better, much, much better. So now I can just get rid of these guys, because I don't need them. Bring this guy back. There we go. Lovely. And in the game situation, obviously, this is forgivable. We can go in and start to move stuff a little bit if we wanted to, to soften out these shapes and stuff. In an animation situation, you're probably using something a lot higher res, or you probably just apply the um, proxy smooth to it like that. As you can, in animation and in VFX, you can render out a smooth wireframe, because obviously you're doing everything pre um pre-render but in games we can't do that so we need to just worry about getting that looking nice and soft or as, as soft as we can remember there is a poly count even though get game engines are getting better and better and better we still need to always kind of respect the theory of poly count economy so there you go and like i said before that lays out our uvs for us perfectly so if we select these guys these okay so it's upside down but please flip that around. There you go. So now we've got all our polygons lined. So if you are using something like a material uh, generator inside Unreal 4 or Unity, where you're applying a general surface to this and then letting the actual material like dictate roughness or iridescence or anything like that, then you know this gives us a absolutely perfect work. Um, absolutely perfect ground to go off 
and cuts out a lot of our work for us so we don't have to start messing around with UVs. So those of you who want to do something with curtains inside your scenes or inside your uh, VFX situations or anything like that, there you go.